hello everybody. Um, I am not sure if you can hear me or not. Um, my name's uh, Ali Richardson. I'm one of the consultants uh, in reproductive medicine. I work at um, Care based in Northampton. Um, thank you all for joining us um, this evening. I'm just going to wait a, a few more minutes just for um, everybody to come in. Um, we're already at 68, which is really good. I think there's a few more that have um, registered for the evening. Oh, brilliant. I've got Got some thumbs up so you can all hear me that's really reassuring um it's probably just my admin team in the background um so yeah so first of all massive welcome to everybody i hope you all had a lovely christmas and a lovely new year um and hopefully this is the start of um uh, an exciting year for you um if you're thinking about moving forwards with fertility treatment um so um i think we've got a little video um for you now I'll see if I can. Um, oh, no, not a video yet. Um, so this is just um, a, a map that shows where our clinics are located. Uh, as you can see, we've got quite a few clinics in the UK and we're also um, spreading out. We've got three clinics in Spain and a couple of clinics in the States as well. So um, we, you know, you shouldn't have to travel um, too far um, to get to your nearest care clinic. Um, this is the video. <laughs> Family. It's who we are and who we're always going to be. It's the important little moments. The big emotions. The beating heart at the centre of our world. It's the journey that we take there. Together, one step at a time. Family is the one thing we'll always care about the most because we believe that family is for everyone. And through our care, we'll do everything we can to make your dream real. We don't just care, we are care. Uh, my name is Professor Charles Kingsland and I'm the Group Clinical Director for Care Fertility. At CARE, our number one belief is family for everyone. And this means we do everything possible to help everyone start or grow their family. We know that nothing is as important as family and that's why we care so much about wanting to give every patient that comes to us their best chance of having a baby. Of course, families come in all shapes and sizes. We get heterosexual couples, couples of the same sex. We get uh, single patients wanting to, uh, to start a family. We get NHS patients. When you have a fertility problem, there should be facilities available for you to get the best advice and the best treatment readily available to give you the best chance of having a baby at a time in your life that is best for you. We will use all our knowledge and experience combined with highly individualized treatment, personal treatment, to help you have the family you are longing for. Unbeknown to Gemma and I, uh, we both carry a gene, um, a deafness gene. We actually have a daughter um, who, who was three, but who was born prematurely deaf. And we were given the option and chose to go down a fertility treatment to kind of avoid our second child having that same gene. We were very lucky in the fact that um, the clinic was only down the road from us. So we felt there was one around the corner. It was had good reviews. We just felt it was good for us, didn't we? The whole package made us just feel really comfortable that actually going with care was the right decision. So the team, the team that we worked with at CARE were unbelievable. They were caring, they were sensitive, they were compassionate, empathetic. Um, and even when I was ringing out with um, I was feeling pains down one side, that the reassurance that they gave me, uh, they honestly do hold your hand every single step of the way and I feel like they lived the journey with us. So I've had several treatments with care and I now have a baby and that's taken um, a number of treatments, fertility treatments, different alternatives, different medicines to try and get it to work for me. I have always said I would recommend Care Fertility. I would recommend them for 
the, the comfort factor that I received, the friendliness, and just my, I think the word is my faith in care fertility. Okay, so um, just a few words of wisdom from uh, Professor Kingsland there. Um, so the plan for this evening is just to um, sort of talk you through um, what happens in a um, sort of general um, IVF cycle. And I'm going to talk about mostly about IVF treatment today. We do have lots of other um, treatments that, that may be more appropriate for you um, as well. Um, obviously, everybody Everybody's coming at this from different um, starting points. Some of you um, will be new to treatment. Some of you may have had treatment elsewhere. Um, some of you, you will all have different diagnoses. So obviously this isn't going to be um, super specific for all of you. It's just to give you a general overview um, about what, um, you know, what the sort of journey would involve. Um, so um, the first thing um, that you will do uh, when you make contact with CARE um, is that they will um, book for you to have some baseline investigations just so that we've got a little bit of information about you um, before we see you for um, the consultation appointments. Um, and for um, women, uh, the investigations um, primarily consist of an ultrasound scan um, and that's just so that we can get a good look at your anatomy, um, look to see if there's any lumps or bumps anywhere that might cause problems, so things like polyps or fibroids in the womb or big cysts on the ovaries. Um, and, you know, it's, it's good to know about those things in advance. Um, so that's what we're looking for on the scan. Um, the other thing that we're looking for on the scan and um, the reason that we do the AMH blood test um, is to give us an idea of what your ovarian reserve is. So women are born with all the eggs in their ovaries that they're ever going to have. Um, and that number, unfortunately, gets less as we get older. Um, a good predictor of your ovarian reserve is how old you are, but not everyone is, is the same as everybody else at the same age. Um, so we have these tests to measure your specific ovarian reserve um, and like I said one of those is where we count the follicles on the ultrasound scan um, and the other is the AMH blood test and from that information we can then tailor your fertility treatment um, so it's, you know towards you and your specific circumstances so it's got a better chance of, of being successful. Um, the main investigation that we do for men um, is a semen analysis um, and um, from that the, the embryologist will have a look at how much that sperm there is, um, what proportion of the sperm is moving effectively um, and what proportion of the sperm looks normal. And again, from that information, we can then um, tailor the, the treatment that we recommend um, to you and your specific set of circumstances. So once you've had the investigations, you'd then get booked in for your um, consultation with one of the um, doctors. Um, and from that, we'll go through your um, your history, um, you know, sort of any, any previous pregnancies that you may have had, any medical problems that you've had um, or still got, uh, any operations, things like that. We'll also go through the results of those investigations uh, and find out what your hopes and aspirations are. Um, so that together we can come up with um, a treatment plan that, um, you know, is hopefully going to be effective um, for you. Um, and um, we, so all of um, uh, the treatment is supported by the patient portal. So it's how we communicate with you and it's also um, how you can communicate with us. Um, so if you've got any investigations or any results or anything that you've had done elsewhere, you can upload copies of that for us to review. Um, and again, copies of everything that we do so your scan reports and your consultation letters and your protocols and things will all be put on your portal um, so it's really easy to access on your phone on your ipad or um, you know you're not rummaging around for bits of paper 
Um, so the IVF process um, itself, so if you, this is going to sound a bit crazy, but just bear with me. Um, if you imagine your ovaries look like a bunch of grapes uh, and each grape is a follicle and inside each follicle is an egg. And normally once a month, your brain sends a little hormone signal to one of those follicles and says you are the chosen one. That follicle gets bigger and bigger and bigger and eventually releases the egg. And that's the egg that could potentially get fertilized by the sperm that month um, but most women's ovaries have many more follicles than than just the one follicle um, and the other follicles that aren't utilized that month just shrivel up and dissolve um, and the eggs that they contain are wasted so the reason why IVF treatment is so good is because we give you hormones to stimulate your ovaries so that all the follicles get big all at the same time and then we can potentially get an egg from each follicle um, and then hopefully we can fertilize all those eggs and then we can create you know lots of embryos for you and then um, you know transfer the embryos back into your womb so there's there's basically strength in numbers um, so the way that we do that the way that we stimulate your ovaries um, is by giving you hormones um, it's the same hormone that your body produces naturally but your body just produces a teeny tiny um, amount because it just wants to stimulate one of the follicles. We want to stimulate all the follicles so we'll give you a, a higher dose of hormone. Um, the hormones only exist as injections, um, so the nurses will teach you how to do those injections yourself. Um, it's usually one or two injections a day. They're subcutaneous injections, so they just go underneath the surface of the skin. It's not like in the movies where the needles are this big. They are quite shallow um, injections, and the manufacturers that make the, the um, hormones, they know that it's it's just normal people that are going to be doing the injections. They know it's not healthcare professionals. So the, the pen devices are quite quite friendly um, and they normally just have a dial and you dial the right number up and then hold it against your skin and push a button and it, it really is quite simple um, once once you've been shown how to do it. Um, so you normally have those injections for between about 10 and 14 days um, and um, during that oh that there's an example of the needle so they are quite small um, during that 10 to 14 days when you're having the injections and um, you'll need to come into the clinic a couple of times for, for scans so that we can monitor the growth of the follicles and make sure that they're growing nicely. And sometimes we need to tweak the dose of the medicines that you're on um, if, if you know they're growing too quickly or too slowly. Um, and that will all be guided um, by the scan. After, like I said, between 10 to 14 days, the scan will usually um, show that you've got a good number of follicles above a certain size. Um, and um, at, at that point, we know that you're ready to have your eggs collected. Um, and so we give you one last trigger injection. Um, and then um, 36 hours later, you'll come into the clinic to have your eggs collected. Um, the egg collection procedure is done uh, under sedation. Um, so it's it's not a full on anaesthetic, but it's it's quite nice. Um, some uh, um, yeah. So usually um, there's either a sedationist or an anaesthetist there that will um, pop a little drip in the back of your hand um, and give you some nice gin and tonic flavored medicine and you have a lovely snooze for 10 to 15 minutes while we collect the eggs. Um, it's done with an internal scan um, so by that point you'll have had several internal scans so you'll know what they are if you've not had one yet um, and there's a needle attached to the scan probe and we put the needle through the vagina into the follicles of the ovaries and suck out all the fluid that the follicles contain and then we give that fluid straight away to the embryologists. They look at it under the microscope microscope and count and collect the eggs for us. Um, usually takes 10 to 15 minutes, uh, as I said, um, and um, as soon as you wake up, we'll be able to tell you how many eggs we've collected. Um, and then um, you will go back to the ward and recover and just wake up properly from the um, sedation and then you'll be ready to go home usually about an hour or so later. 
Whilst you're having your eggs collected, um, that is when we would need the sperm sample. So uh, depending on your situation, um, there may be, you know, um, you know, we often use a, a fresh sperm sample that's produced whilst you're having your eggs collected. Um, if you're using donor sperm, then that will have been frozen and um, we'll, we'll thaw that sperm out whilst you're having your eggs collected. Um, sometimes people have, have got frozen sperm from their partner, which we're using. So again, and we would thaw all of that out um, whilst you're having your eggs collected. Um, and then um, the afternoon, in the afternoon that we've collected your eggs, uh, we would then um, look to fertilise your eggs. Um, and um, just struggling to move on to the next slide for some reason. Um, so, yeah, so we fertilise the eggs um, in the afternoon. Um, there's two different ways that we can fertilise the eggs. Um, and the, the, the method that we recommend will be um, dependent on your um, circumstances. Um, for, for most people, um, whether, nor, whether semen analysis is completely normal, um, we would recommend IVF treatment. Um, and this is when we mix the sperm and the eggs together um, in a dish and the sperm still has to fertilise the eggs themselves. Um, and um, that is just standard IVF. You can tell I'm not an embryologist because I'm not giving you technical speak. Um, if uh, we have any concerns at all about the semen analysis um, or if we're trying to fertilise previously frozen eggs um, or if um, you've had um, poor fertilisation rates previously or um, if you've been trying to get pregnant for a long time and we haven't got a cause for the subfertility, um, there are situations when we might recommend something called ICSI um, and ICSI stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection um, and that is when uh, the embryologists will look at the sperm under the microscope, uh, they will pick sperm that look good uh, and they will physically inject one one sperm into one egg um, and they will do that for as many eggs as we collect. So if we collect a dozen eggs, they'll find a dozen sperm. If we collect 30 eggs, they'll find 30 sperm. Um, and um, that's, um, like I said, there's very specific situations when we would recommend that for you. Um, once the um, eggs have been fertilised, we then put them in incubators um, for the next five days to let them develop. And um, it, in my head, that five days is like a marathon hurdle race. Um, and the embryos have got all these little hurdles that they've got to um, jump over. And we know that not every embryo is going to be able to jump over every hurdle. Um, so there's an element of sort of survival of the fittest um, of it all. Um, so there will be a gradual decline in the numbers as you progress through the cycle and that is normal um, and that's why we give you the hormones to stimulate your ovaries to collect as many eggs uh, as we can because the, the more eggs we create, collect, the more embryos we create, the more embryos we create, the more likely we are to end up um, with at least one, if not a few good quality embryos. Um, so that's that's five days. Um, we do so on on the fifth day. Um, the embryologists will look at the embryos under the microscope, um, and they will pick the best looking embryo um, to transfer back into your womb. Um, but there are other um, other tools that we have available at Care that can help us select the best embryo for you. Um, one of those is a video that I think's just played in the background. Um, which is our Care Maps system. Um, and Care Maps is, um, again, I'm not an embryologist, so it, it's very simple the way that I explain it, but it's it's a really fancy incubator um, and it has cameras inside the in incubator, so we never need to disturb the embryos. Um, and um, every time the embryo does something important, so every time it jumps over one of those hurdles, um, the, the incubator, 
so we'll timestamp when that happens and then at the end of the five days it puts all of that data into a fancy algorithm um, and then each embryo gets given a score and the embryo with the highest score is the one that's most likely to implant so it just gives the embryologist a bit more information and um, to help them pick the best embryo which is most likely to result in the pregnancy first off so that's um, an option that you can um, choose to add on to your treatment um, if you if you do decide to come through for IVF treatment with us. Um, the other thing that helps to select the best embryos um, is something called PGTA, which stands for Pre-Implantation Genetic Testing for Aneuploidy. Uh, it's a very long name, hence why we call it PGTA. Um, and this, so when, when we look at embryos under the microscope and even with the care maps, um, system. We can only see the cells inside the embryos. We can't see the chromosomes inside the cells. Um, and um, there may be some situations where having that information about the chromosomes might be important. Um, so if you're a little bit older, if you've had lots of miscarriages previously, for example, um, you might be interested in PGTA. And that's when we biopsy the embryos um, and look at the chromosomes. I think this is a video of it now. So they they are removing some cells um, from the embryo. It's just half a dozen cells and they will send those to the lab in London where they will amplify the cells um, and look at the chromosomes and then it takes two or three weeks for the results to come back um, and then we will know whether each embryo has got the correct number of um, chromosomes or whether it's got too many or too few chromosomes um, and we know that the embryos with the correct number of chromosomes are more likely to implant so it increases the success rates associated with the treatment um, and if the embryo has got um, too many or too few um, chromosomes then it, it won't implant or if it does implant it will very likely result in a miscarriage um, and we wouldn't want you to um, go through that so we, we wouldn't transfer those embryos and um, so they're just a couple of options that you know you can ask about during your consultation um, or we might suggest that you consider <coughs> um, adding on to the standard cycle. Um, so, yeah, so once we've selected the best embryo, if there are any other surplus embryos that are good quality, we will freeze those for you. Um, but the one that we've selected to be the best um, will be the one that we transfer. And that procedure is usually very simple and straightforward for the majority of people. Um, it's a bit like having a smear test. So similar sort of positioning, similar sort of equipment, uh, similar sort of facial expressions. Um, but we just just pass a very fine catheter through the neck of the womb. Um, it's done under ultrasound guidance so um, we can see what we're doing and you guys can see it on the screen and I won't say it's very romantic but it is, it's a nice day um, and once the catheter is in position um, we inject the embryo um, and then it usually takes a couple of minutes. You don't usually need any sedation although that can be arranged in advance if you need it um, and then um, you go home and you twiddle your thumbs for what feels like an eternity but what is actually um, only two weeks um, and at the end of that two weeks we will know whether the treatment has been successful because you'll have a positive pregnancy test um, or whether it's been unsuccessful in which case you will either have a negative pregnancy test or sometimes you, your period starts to, to come around about the time that you've been told to do the pregnancy test. Um, during that two weeks, um, you'll have stopped all the injections. They stop before you have the egg collection. Um, the only medication that you'll need from the point of egg collection onwards uh, is some progesterone uh, and we use usually use vaginal pessaries for that but you can have um, rectal suppositories if you prefer or um, there are injectable forms of the progesterone as well if you prefer um, and then if your pre pregnancy test is positive you'll need to continue those progesterone range supplements for a few more weeks um, and then we'll arrange for you to come in um, for um, a pregnancy scan a few weeks later. Um, I'm struggling to move on. Um, oh, yes, yeah, sorry, I've just I've explained the embryo transfer process. 
Um, so, um, as I said at the start, lots of you are coming from, from different places. There may uh, be people that are needing donor sperm or donor eggs um, for a variety of different reasons. Um, and we can uh, help you uh, with your treatment um, at care um, in that regard. We have a sperm bank and an egg bank um, uh, within the company, so um, we can uh, help um, get you matched with um, an appropriate egg or sperm donor. Um, if you are um, a single woman or um, a, a same-sex female couple uh, and are interested in treatment with using donor sperm, there is always the option um, for um, IUI treatment or insemination treatment rather than IVF treatment. Um, sometimes IUI is an option for heterosexual couples as well um, and that would all be discussed with you um, during your consultation. Um, it depends on um, your specific circumstances and your age and the results of your ovarian reserve tests, um, whether that is something that we would recommend if you're in a heterosexual couple or not. Um, insemination treatment is um, a lot simpler than IVF treatment. It's a lot less invasive. Um, it usually just involves us um, monitoring you in a natural cycle. Um, so you would give us a call on the first day of your period and say that you've started your um, your period and then we would arrange for you to come in for a scan every couple of days from about day 10 onwards and what we're looking for on that scan is for your natural follicle um, when it gets to a certain size we know that you're about to release the egg um, and at that point we would get you to come in we would either have the sperm sample from your partner or the donor sperm that we would thaw um, and then we just pass a very fine catheter through the neck of the wound and inject the sperm into the, the womb. So very, very simple, very straightforward, very low risk. Um, and um, it's, it, you know, it's generally something that we recommend for um, single women and women in same sex um, relationships. But like I said, not always. And that, that would be discussed with you um, in more detail during the consultation. Um, to move the screen on and struggling um so um yeah i think i've uh, covered all of that we do um uh, you know uh, we do partner with other sperm banks so you don't have to get your sperm from um care and um, there are other sperm banks that you can use where you you might just find a, a, an appropriate sperm donor um, uh, quicker in one of the other sperm banks. And that's absolutely fine to use those. We just need to get the sperm imported to the care clinic that you've chosen to have your treatment in. Um, so um, we also um, offer surrogacy treatment um, to those that need it. And we have um, a dedicated surrogacy team for that um, that have won lots of awards um, recently. So they are really brilliant um, group of people that will help um, coordinate your journey. It is slightly more complicated than a, a, a sort of more standard IVF um, cycle and, um, you know, obviously there's lots more um, people uh, involved with the intended parents and then the surrogate and then potentially also the egg donor or or, or whatever so um, we we have um, you know appropriate people to help you um, in that journey and we uh, also have counsellors available as well so they can um, you know talk to you about the implications of uh, having a baby using donor sperm or donor eggs or using a surrogate, um, as well as support anybody um, that's coming through for fertility treatment, either before, during or after their treatment, if, if they feel that they need it at any point in their journey. Um, well, I think I've, I think I'm jumping ahead of all the the slides. Sorry. Um, so as well as the counsellors, um, obviously all the doctors and the nurses in the clinics are here to support you every step of the way. Um, we also have, um, uh, you know, patient forums um, and um, support groups as well. So um, it's you know you are not alone. Um, we are we are here for you and um, will answer 
questions, however silly they may seem to you, you can guarantee we've heard sillier. Um, and, um, you know, we know that we do this all day, every day. But for you guys, it's a, a relatively new experience. So um, we are uh, always delighted to answer questions um, if you've got them. Um, so I think, oh, yeah, so this is just a little bit um, about paying for um, the fertility treatment. So you can pay for your fertility treatment as you go along, um, but we do also have some payment packages um, that um, you may be interested in. Um, the multi-cycle package um, is um, anyone is eligible for. Um, the IVF refund programs, you do need to um, have a, a medical um, assessment to make sure that you're suitable for those packages. Um, they do involve paying a little bit more money up front, um, but if your treatment is unsuccessful, then they guarantee you. Um, so with the multi-cycle programme, um, you get guaranteed two fresh cycles and any number of frozen cycles from the embryos that we create um, without having to pay any more money each time apart from for the drugs. And um, for the refund programme, again, you get guaranteed two or three um, IVF cycles. Um, and then they'll, if you're not successful, if you're not, if you've not had a baby um, after all of that, then you'd be guaranteed to get a, a percentage refund um, at the end of of the, the treatment um, and similarly with the with the donor eggs if you've not had a, a baby um, after the two or three cycles with the donor eggs then you'd be guaranteed to get a refund um, so they are worth looking at um, you know depending on your um, individual circumstances there's lots of information on that available on our website but we've also got a dedicated care pay team um, that will um, you know sort of talk you through that in a bit more detail they obviously can't tell you what to do um, but they can give you the information that you need to make the the right decision for you okay so i think that's everything from me this evening i think my team in the background have hopefully been um fielding some questions for me um there's a question uh in my chat about egg freezing so um uh, egg freezing is something that we offer um at care this is um a really good option um for um sort of creating a family in the future um so it may be um you know, for whatever reason, you may not feel like you're um, ready to have a baby right now, but you're anxious about your age and, and getting older. Um, and so what we can do is um, put you through um, an half of an IVF cycle now so we'd stimulate you and we'd collect your eggs um, and then we freeze your eggs um, for as, as long as it's required really um, and then when you feel ready um, to have a child in the future um, you just let us know and then we would thaw those eggs uh, and we can either fertilize them with sperm from your partner if you've got one and they're male uh, or we can use donor sperm to fertilize the eggs um, and then we would transfer the embryo back into your womb um, at a at a time that was um you know convenient for you to start your family so it's um it, you know it's generally something that uh, younger women will do um we can do it um when you're you know a little bit older um but the um, as you get older, we're likely to collect fewer eggs from you and the quality of those eggs is likely to be reduced. So it may just be that you would need to um, to, to do more cycles to bank a, a reassuring number of eggs um, to give you a good chance of having a, a baby in the future. So it's not that we can't do it um, if you're a little bit older, but, but the benefits and it, 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 the benefits are slightly different at that age. Um, but again, we can um, 
we you know we can talk you through that if that's something that you're interested in doing there's all sorts of reasons why people might want to freeze their eggs um just for social reasons if you know if they're not ready to have a baby or um sometimes um it might be that they're about to have medical treatment that might affect their egg quality or quantity so um some people having chemotherapy for whatever reason or some people having um surgery on their ovaries um things like that you, they might all be reasons reasons why you might want to think about freezing your eggs. Um, so I think that they are all the questions that have come through for me in the chat. Um, if you've got any other questions, um, feel free to put them in the chat now and I'll hang around um, for a bit. I think there's a few more coming. Um, this slide here is just to um, highlight you to other events that we've got um, going um, over the next few weeks um, in um, at care. So um, similar sorts of talks uh, to the one that I've done, um, but they, they might just be a focus on something slightly different. I think the one with Tom uh, in a few weeks time is um, a bit more focused on uh, people needing um, donation services. Um, so you might want to sign in for that one separately. Um, Oh, there's just a question come through in the chat. Sorry, I feel like I'm skitting all over the place now. Um, one of the questions is, do we do double transfers? So this is when we um, transfer um, two embryos. Um, we do do double embryo transfers at care. It's not something that we generally recommend for the majority of women. Um, and the reason for that is not because we're mean. Um, it is because... Um, we um, we don't just want to get you pregnant. We want you to have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. Um, and the best way that we can um, guarantee that is if you just have one baby at a time. So twin pregnancies are high risk pregnancies. Um, there are increased risk of lots of pregnancy complications. Um, and ideally, um, we you know we don't want you to have a very premature baby or one that's born that um, you know. Has, has got health problems um, because of that. So generally, we just recommend transferring one at a time. Also, um, we're now quite good at IVF treatment. So in days gone by when we weren't so good, we used to compensate for that by putting more embryos back. Um, but now we're pretty good at what we do. We don't need to compensate in the same way. And actually, when we do put two um, embryos back, it doesn't, I think people think it doubles the chances of it being successful. It doesn't it just increases it by a couple of percent and actually the cumulative pregnancy rates are higher if we just do one at a time and freeze the surplus ones and now also because we're so good at freezing and thawing embryos again we weren't very good at that in years gone by um, but now we're really good at freezing and thawing embryos um, we generally just recommend transferring one and freezing the surplus but there are instances when we might agree to put two back for example if you're a little bit older if you've had lots of failed cycles previously or if the embryo quality isn't great they're the sorts of situations when we might put two back um, so I hope it's answered that question. Uh, another question on uh, when we use ICSI. Um, so as you remember, so ICSI um, stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. Um, and that is when the embryologist will look at the sperm under the microscope um, and pick a sperm that looks good. And then they will physically inject that sperm into the egg. And the most common reason that we might recommend ICSI um, is if the sperm count is low or if the motility or morphology of the sperm is reduced. Um, so that's that's the most common reason that we would use ICSI. Other reasons that we might use ICSI are if we are using frozen eggs. So um, anyone that's having treatment or most people that are having treatment using donor eggs, they will be frozen. So we have to use ICSI to fertilise those eggs. Um, also, if you've had IVF treatment previously um, and the fertilization rates were very low with IVF, we would then recommend that you have ICSI in any subsequent cycles. Um, just
just thinking when else we oh and if you've so if you've been trying to get pregnant for more than say three years um, and there isn't an identifiable cause for your fertility struggles that so all your investigations have been completely normal but you've still struggled to get pregnant in those situations we might recommend ICSI over IVF treatment for you guys it's exactly the same there's no difference for you whatsoever the only difference is what the embryologists do in the lab and how they they fertilize the eggs but it's no it's no different treatment for you you don't need any extra hormones or anything like that it's just how they fertilize the eggs in the lab um, just wait a few more minutes just to see if there's any other questions um, that are coming through. Um, I know previous um, questions people have asked about things like fibroids uh, and whether or not um, we would um, recommend any treatment for fibroids before you start your IVF treatment. Um, and that is not a simple answer. Um, it very much depends on how many fibroids you've got, how big the fibroids are and where exactly the fibroids are located. Um, if they are small and they're on the outside of the womb and we don't think they'll cause problems, then we can um, proceed with the fertility treatment without having any um, uh, surgery to remove the fibroids. If the fibroids are a bit bigger and they're growing inside the womb, um, then we do generally recommend that they are removed before you start your IVF treatment. Unfortunately, that's not something that we can do for you at care, um, but we would be able to signpost you to um, the, the places nearby where you are um, as to where you might look to, to get those sorts of procedures done. Um, anything else coming through in the chat, Chloe? Yep, there is something coming through. Um, oh, I think I've answered that one, Chloe. No, I think she's she's teetering on the edge of asking questions. Um, so, yeah, so I hope that that's been um, a, a useful um, overview for you. It is a whistle stop tour. And obviously, like I said at the start, it, the, the specific treatment will very much depend on your specific circumstances. And, you know, I don't want you to think that it's one size fits all because it's really not. Um, we will tailor every single step um, of the way according to, to you and what you your needs are. Um, so um, if uh, if you uh, are interested in the next steps, then you just need to um, contact us and we can arrange for you to uh, have the investigations and book you an appointment. Uh, if you've had any questions that I haven't answered tonight, um, then someone from the admin team will get back to you in the next few days. Um, and um, uh, you can always email marketing at carefertility.com uh, if if you've got any other questions, if you know if they occur to you, at, you know, as soon as we've closed the session down this evening, there's always a way to get back in touch with us. So I wish you all the very, very best um, with your treatments. And uh, if we can help in any way, uh, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. I'm Shah and I manage CARE's new patient inquiry team. We're here to make it easy for you to take your very first step in your fertility journey. We completely understand how nervous and excited you might be when you contact us. This is the start of a life-changing process and hopefully the beginning of an amazing future as a family. So it's really important that we give you all the information you need. That way, we can help you to feel much more comfortable and confident with your treatment. Whatever you need to talk about, I want to reassure you that no question is silly or trivial. We appreciate that there might be a lot to take in at first, but don't worry, we'll send you a clear information pack about the treatments you're interested in, and we're always here for any follow-up queries. My team also manage inquiries about care pay, our range of funding packages which are exclusive to care fertility patients. When you're ready, we can book you a virtual consultation with a specialist fertility doctor from your local care clinic. So if you want more information, have a question or wish to book an appointment, call my team. We want you to know that we are here for you at every stage of your fertility journey. We say that our patients become part of our care family and it's true. We care deeply about you and your future 
and our teams are here to make sure you have all the support you need. The reason why we chose care was just one, the care that they give you, um, the aftercare that they have available to you and the fact that they um, offer different forms of um, treatment um, and they listen to you. One thing that I've identified and what I've noticed when speaking to other um, people that I've met within the infertility community is there's a lot of clinics out there that don't necessarily listen to you as the patient. It was kind of a one size fits all, but with care that didn't seem to be the case at all. They took everything into consideration and they listened um, to your concerns. They listened to you as a person and they put a, a package and, and a process in place that will help you and, you know, fingers crossed will give you that positive result from the at the end of it so without a shadow of a doubt if I had to go through it again I would definitely go back to care. Oh the support at care was brilliant. It was brilliant yeah I mean the nurses were brilliant for us you feel so looked after yeah and cared, looked after and cared by, by the whole team we felt that they did care and it wasn't just for them mm. getting something out of it it was actually that ongoing support them. yeah and they wanted it to work for us care fertility started over 20 years ago with one clinic and the goal of helping patients achieve their dream of family through truly personal care and the most scientifically advanced fertility treatments we've grown from that one clinic we now have clinics across the UK and many people have become part of our care family with over 50,000 care babies in the world but one thing has and always will remain the same. We care for each and every patient. We care about your dreams of having a baby and we put our heart and soul into every aspect of what care can offer you. To provide you with the best care possible and to give you your best chance of success and treatment, we look to our own care family. From our consultants, embryologists, and nurses, to our admin teams and specialist fertility counsellors, we've also put a lot of thought into how we improve each and every step of your journey, which will no doubt begin with lots of questions. We know that thinking about starting IVF can be daunting for some, and that's why our care, patient services and support teams will always be there for you whenever you have a question, need advice or simply want someone to talk to so that you feel completely confident and in control of your fertility options. So yes, we have grown and developed over the years, but care and empathy are always at the heart of who we are. We are passionate about changing lives and creating futures, and I hope that this shines through in everything we do and everyone you meet at all of our clinics. We don't just care, we are care. One in six people need help to grow their family. You're not alone. And our care family will do everything we can to help your dream of family come true. There are over 50,000 care babies in the world today. And behind this success is our promise to make more heartfelt dreams of family become reality by ensuring our care goes into everything we do for all our patients every single day you will receive truly individualized treatment, a patient-centric approach with empathy at its heart. We understand how nervous and excited you might be about getting started, but you can be assured of kindness, empathy, and all the information you need from our new patient inquiry team. We are all here to make it easy for you to take your very first step in your fertility journey. Call our team on 0800 564 2270 to learn more and book an appointment. We don't just care, we are care.